Stacy in Japan, and this is my third, third video in a row. Wow, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. Getting hungry though. Anyway, um, I'm actually going to be talking about something a little bit more serious than I let off, and it is about why people don't seem to be surviving japan or how could i put it why people actually leave japan after a few years or even after a year yeah let's let's talk about that um so i plan to be i planned or plan to be in japan for four years four years okay uh, before i came to japan i actually was privileged to meet somebody at my old job who used to work in japan and when she told me she was in japan for almost four years i was like why did you come back why did you come back to jamaica you know because i mean the truth is i was really struggling in jamaica yes i was working but you know the expenses it, it it just wasn't adding up you know talk about living from paycheck to paycheck or living from paycheck to two paychecks like mm. so it wasn't working out and i was like why would anybody get that opportunity to go to japan and and leave now mind you this is coming from a girl who has no interest and i say has absolutely no interest in japan really um didn't have any before thought i would cultivate some after being here for two years now but really there's no interest i just have no interest in japan um yes it's all new and yes i'm getting to experience something new and different very different but i'm still not enticed about anything you know uh, i remember one of the kids from my church saying auntie Make sure you take the bullet train, yeah? The what? I didn't even know what bullet train was. And this little little girl was telling me to, to make sure I took the bullet train. Of course, now I know it's a Shinkansen. Um, and I still haven't taken it. <sighs> two years now, and I have not taken the Shinkansen. Two years now, and I have not seen tokyo or gone to tokyo and i frankly have no interest in going to tokyo but that's not what this video is about this video is about identifying some of the reasons um, why people would have gotten this kind of opportunity and left after a year or two or three almost four years kind of thing while others may have very well just stayed um, and have been staying for over 10 years, all right? So I'm gonna be talking a bit from top of my head as I've been doing. Interestingly, it's not my style, <laughs> but um, Japan can be a very, very lonely place for a foreigner, for a black foreigner, for a black foreigner from little, little Jamaica that most of them think in Africa. But hey, they have almost no idea, little to no idea of where Jamaica is. So, yeah, it, it can be a very lonely place. Uh, usually when you come here for the first time, you come without any connections, which we found to be so important. So you come here without any connections. You accept any position and you are put in countryside or what they call inaka, country, country, like bush. Um, you know rice field and all them things there and so you don't know the language most of the times if you're jamaican and you came here knowing the language language please leave me a comment below yeah i'm gonna talk to you off air right so you come here not really knowing the language um whatever amount of cultural cultural culture cultural awareness that you do have is probably from the um the orientation before you left Jamaica or before you left whatever country and while you were in training here about Japan. Yes, maybe you did take some initiative and read up about Japan. Um, but even so, I personally came here with no interest in Japan outside of just working. I didn't come here with any knowledge of the language. 
uh, apart from, you know, just basic greetings. I did try to study some greetings, but that was about it. Um, so you have this cultural difference, vast cultural difference to deal with, vast cultural difference. Coming from a Christian country like Jamaica to a Buddhist and Shinto practicing country like Japan, uh, when you mention the word Christian or Jesus, they're like, huh? They're clueless. They don't have a clue what you're talking about. Never heard it before. So it's a great mission field, of course. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So you find yourself in a country, remote area. You can't speak Japanese. Um, let's say you are even in the city. You can't speak Japanese. You have no connections with anybody. You're probably introverted like myself. And not very sociable, even though you smile a lot like me. Um, yeah, so you find that you are struggling psychologically um, just to, to go on each day. And then to throw another spanner in the mix, you have the extreme weather conditions to deal with. The cold is no joke. Coming from Jamaica, Personally speaking, because some Jamaicans have come to Japan and find themselves a Hokkaido. I'm like, hey, good for you. Um, the extreme weather just kind of shuts off my brain and, and takes a lot of recalibrating and just <sighs> to try and keep going to work. I'm like, yo, they don't take a break. Rain, snow, flood. What do you call it? what them call it typhoon you still go to work okay so it's like the, the pressure the pressure is just overwhelming you know um and this is my personal experience i don't know what your experience has been like if you do live in japan or lived in japan um you can you can share your experiences with me so if if i if i like decide to just get up and leave japan it would be because of the the weather the cold in particular i can survive the mushiatsui very humid summers i can survive it's it's deadly but i still prefer that to the um the eight months of cold um so the cold weather the language barrier to study japanese you you really have to commit and dedicate time to study in the language and frankly speaking since i'm not that interested in the country it's very difficult to do that and i feel that i am i'm a little bit too old right now to focus yes i'm 36 i'm too old not i'm not old i'm just too old to focus on learning a language like that right now um with other interests and focuses in in mind so the weather the language barrier, the isolated feeling, not just by being alone, you know, because when I go to work, I still kind of feel very alone. You know, you hardly have teachers approaching you and engaging you because you can't speak the language and they can't speak English. And even the English teachers don't even engage you. So you're like, man, man, it's, it's tough. Um, and then not being such an outgoing person you know um i try what has been helpful honestly is linking up with other jamaicans um clinging to those japanese who have become good friends though you know they have been really helpful and finding a church in my first year i went to an all japanese speaking church for one whole year just for the fellowship just to be surrounded by people you know i didn't understand what was being preached most of the times i mean after a while i kind of pick up a few things you know and then after a while my, my pastor got very very um animated you know you know just trying to um help me to be a part you know but my second year i found a bilingual church and that made a world of difference um so, you know, when I think back about what I said to my friend about how could you leave Japan? It's such a great opportunity. Like, listen, 
me ready for going my yard no right if if things were different back home man i would have gone home after the first year god no god no japan rough japan rough but then there are persons who've been here over 10 years but guess what most of those persons who have been here long term one have or have had interest in japan prior to coming to japan two have studied in japan three have developed relationships in japan four have gotten married in japan five have had kids in japan and just decided hey let's just settle here and so on so there's that kind of support which you need you need that kind of support when you're in japan right you need that kind of support and um i want to thank god for the the few friends that i have back home and my family doesn't keep in touch as much um incidentally but i thank god for them still so you really have to have a good support system to survive living in japan by yourself whether you're gonna find that support system from friends family back in jamaica come to japan make new family new friends find a church you know whatever will help you because sometimes it's just a psychological pressure that really will just drive you to go back home you know and not so much that you don't really want to be here but you know just all the cultural differences and nuances um but it's possible it's doable and for that reason for that reason i created the group jamaicans living in japan to kind of form a, a support system to kind of help people to network together you know kind of find out who lives where who live close who would like to meet up and that kind of thing which is so helpful has been so helpful for me personally so thanks for watching thanks for listening to me ramble you know if you come to japan and if you ever feel like oh you just want to go back home to your country wherever that is just reach out to somebody because you are not alone in this all right so bye for now from stacy in japan bye